Today on the Mayfly Bench, this little Behringer combo amp. So the complaint with this amp is that the input jack is loose. Now the owner of this amp got the amp free and um, I agreed to have a look at it in exchange for physiotherapy on my elbow. It's a barter system. The owner has never plugged this amp in or tried it, but the jack is physically very loose. I'm wiggling it right now, and that can't be a good sign. We're gonna take it apart and have a look. Now, some people say a cheap amp like this is not worth fixing. I disagree. Anything that makes music or is a musical instrument is worth repairing if someone uses that for its intended purpose. And so a little amp like this, they're a pain to work on for sure because it's old printed circuit board, but it is worth repairing. The amplifier is now part on the bench. Once we've done that, you can a few things become apparent straight away. That the first thing is that the speaker wire is soldered directly without a connector of any kind directly to the printed circuit boards inside the amplifier. That makes it so that in order to remove the chassis, you have to deal with this wire that always stays connected. The second thing we notice, it is all printed circuit boards in there. Surface mount components. This amplifier was never designed for repair. And I say, shame on you guys. I fully believe that if you want something to have a long life, you got to be able to make it repairable. If you do that, it'll have a long life. If you don't, it's landfill. This in a nutshell is one of the differences from a really cheap piece of equipment and a really good piece of equipment. The ability to fix it. In order to get out the internals of the amplifier, I'm going to have to remove some screws. The chassis is held together in two parts connected with these three screws you can see along the bottom. Once I do that, we can have a look inside. With the screws out, I'm just going to turn the phone here so we can see easier. Got the chassis apart and you can see there's all kinds of umbilical wires going from here, there and everywhere. What's interesting is that the power input jack and the power switch are all covered with electrical tape. That's interesting. It looks like it's stuck too. I don't think anyone's ever had this thing open. Now if the camera picks it up, we can have a look at the input jack. As you can see, it's attached to a little printed circuit board in there. And the whole assembly is loose. So we're going to see what we can do. With some persuasion, I've gotten the input jack out of there. You can tell someone's had trouble with this in the past. It's all covered in goop. Threads have stripped out. The input jack itself is... Uh, looks like it could be a switchcraft, or maybe not. At any rate, it is printed circuit board mounted. Onto this little card. The card has a FED on it, some capacitors, and said connector to take it up somewhere else. Replacing this jack should be fairly straightforward. The only problem is, is getting it off the board. So here we have a selection of switchcraft jacks. The one over here is the one that came out of the amp. And we have a selection of other ones. Unfortunately, I do not have an exact replacement. This guy was a printed circuit board mount, stereo, switched jack. Both inputs are switched to ground when you plugged it in. So I've got a switch jack here, but it's not stereo. Or I've got a stereo jack here, but it's not switched. This is the closest thing I have, this open frame one, to a switch stereo jack. Now the question is now, is do I source the correct component that was used originally? Or do I bodge it with something else? Stay tuned. So a little trip on the DigiKey website there, and I found the part available next day, shipping. Part number is N114BPCB. So that's a stereo, both sides switched, printed circuit board, insulated from the chassis, switchcraft jack. Price on the little guy? Eight bucks and 32 cents. Before we put our money down, I figured we'd 
give the amp a little test to make sure it actually functions. Because that would be a drag if you were at the part replacement and the thing didn't work for some other reason. So here we go. <laughs> So I consulted the owner of this amplifier about our dilemma, whether or not we should spend the money for a new part, or whether we should just botch it with something that'll work, high quality component, we know it's going to be good, and the result was, we're going to botch it. Now it's a high quality switchcraft part, but it's an open frame part, it's not a printed circuit board, it's not a printed circuit board component. So we're going to run some fly wires down and hook it up. So here's our plan. We're going to replace this stereo Behringer component with this non-stereo Switchcraft switched component. What we're going to do on the preamplifier, little preamplifier board here, is we are going to ground the stereo input, which is this one close to my fingers. We're going to ground that so no extraneous noise gets into that particular channel. And further inspection of this little input board here, it turns out that the stereo input is in fact grounded on the printed circuit board itself. I tested that while beeping it out with my digital multimeter. And so, yeah, we don't have to worry about a stereo jack at all. So here's the new component, solder on with its tails on it. And here's the component with the tail sticking through the printed circuit board. Here's the completed assembly. So the soldering is done. The assembly is back in the unit and it's connected and it's all tightened up. Now let's bolt it up together and see what it does. Yeah. 